I think. Yeah. Okay. I think. Glitching out a little bit. Glitching out. I think I'm All good right. here. I full bars here. All right. I think I'm doing better. <laughs> <laughs> How are awesome. you today? Awesome. How are you? Good. You know, it's a, we're in a weird time, so things are strange outside, but, uh, you know, happy to be healthy and the family and all that, so that's all good. And you have a new film out, which is even better, coming out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, help, being healthy and having family healthy is, you know, I, I'd put above the new film, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have a new film out. Yes, yeah, it goes, I guess, family, film. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, they change, I'm sure, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but this is an awesome project. I got to watch the film a couple days ago, and I love your opening sequence. I thought it was, I thought it provoked a lot of questions and a lot of thought thinking uh, motions. So tell me a little bit about how the opening sequence came together. You know, I think that, um, you know, I don't want to give too much away with the opening sequence, but I think that, um, you know, in a sequence like that, you don't want to give away too much. You know, I think that you want to, you want, it's okay to be ahead of the audience a little bit, you know, it's okay to have them, you know, have questions that get answered later or, you know, kind of drop out crumbs here and there. But uh, important to me with that sequence, you know, because it's such a powerful, impactful way to open the film that, that, that you know, we just didn't try to try to answer too much in that in that sequence, you know? No, I thought it was I thought it was great. Like, I, and I thought it related to a lot what's happening in the world today. Um, yeah, it seems like the film is definitely a reflection of a lot of things we see going on in the world today, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, it was definitely, uh, the, the timing was pretty good, I will say. Uh, talk about a little bit about your collaboration with Carl on and bringing his script to life, and how was that? Um, you know, look, Carl obviously has a great track record, and, um, you know, uh, Unhinged is, is, you know, no different than... than um, some of the other great films that he's written and um you know uh, thankfully i was able to uh you know take that script and 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 you know sort of uh put my thumbprint on it to 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 you know bring it to bring it to the screen you know so um i had a lot of good raw materials to work with that's for sure for, oh incredible and then you have an awesome cast as well working with the iconic russell i mean you've worked with some big names over your whole career uh, do you get nervous when these big names are on set? Like, I, I know I would, but is that intimidating at all for you? I mean, I think early on it was, you know. I think that um, that it doesn't really kind of feel that way anymore. It's more about just kind of being, being myself and being honest with them. And, you know, um, I think a lot of times, you know, you find – the, you know, uh, actors are, you, you know, people don't want to say no to them about anything and they don't want to challenge them about anything and they walk on shells. And I find that, you know, um, just being straight and being yourself and kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, be, I'm just about solving problems and it seems to, you know, go over well, you know, it seems to work. Russell and I clicked and, and, you know, we had some back and forth and push and pull a bit, that hopefully produce some good, you know, some good things on camera, you know, and I think that um, the collaboration was, was challenging and fun. And, and, you know, uh, uh, he's smart, you know, he's a smart guy. He, he, um, he probably knows more about what everyone is doing or should be doing on set than, 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 than they do. You know, he kind of, he knows everything and he sees everything. So, you know, if uh, if he had a question for me that I didn't know the answer to, I would just say, I don't know, let's figure it out. You know, I, I think there's, there. you know, maybe the younger version of me might have felt this pressure to kind of act like I knew something that I didn't. And I think people mm -hmm. like Russell see right through that, you know? Oh, yeah, I'm sure it was as many films as he did. Um, how do you, how, what is your process of picking a film? Like, how do you know what's the right fit for you at this point? Like, what draws you to a film? Um, you know, I've never been very like genre specific, you know, I've been just more about 
you know, when I find it, when I read something, I, I have to make, you know, that's, I, I just kind of, uh, you know, have this single mindedness of purpose that like, okay, I have to make this film. I read the script and I'm already shooting it in my head. I'm already editing it in my head when I'm reading it. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I don't get the job, you know, but, uh, but, you know, um, I, I just, I think it starts with the script when I, when I, I read something and I can't put it down and I know that I have to make that film. What was it about Unhinged that was like an, an automatic yes for you? Like, tell, tell me what said this is for me. Um, you know, I think I was, I was, I couldn't put the script down. You know, I kept turning the page. Like I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next. And yet, you know, from a logistics kind of perspective, it scared me. Like, how am I going to shoot this film? How would I shoot this film? You know, um, the challenges that this film presented uh, really freaked me out. And, and therefore, like, I thought, okay, I'm going to, I got to do this because it scares the hell out of me. And, you know, sort of similar to what Russell said about the character, you know, that character scared him to play that role. So he said he's had, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why he chose to do it because it was, it was out of his comfort zone, you know? No, totally. Um, for those who haven't seen the film and those who will see, there's a, a lot of cars involved. Uh, talk about working with those. I mean, I'm sure it's a technique to it. We've seen all so many car movies, but you guys got a lot of car action in here. Talk about working with them and making the film. Well, look, it, 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 I always pride myself on being the dumbest guy in the room. You know, like if I, if I have great people around me and, you know, a great team and I empower them to do their best work, you know, it, it's, it makes my job a lot easier. So between the, you know, the stunt team and, and camera and grip and electric team and, you know, everybody else, we really just had a great group of people. And, uh, you know, um, I would you know, come up with some idea with some matchbox cars or something. And instead of telling me why I couldn't do it, they all really wanted to find ways to do it. So I'd say, what if we did this? And what if we took a, you know, a cement truck and ran it through a, you know, through a car or something. And, you know, they're, they're, everybody's first reaction was, okay, we could do that if we did this. <clears throat> you know, so being around the right people and, and inspiring them to kind of bring their A game and, you know, kind of uh, uh, rise to the occasion really helped. And I, I had the luxury of having such a great team around me that, you know, it, it definitely, like I said, made my job a lot easier. Of course, I can only imagine. Um, obviously, we're in the middle of a pandemic, as you, can, as you already know. Um, how have you been using your time creatively? Is uh, juices flowing? Are ideas going for you? What's... Uh, how have you been spending your pandemic time? Well, um, my pandemic time has been split between, um, you know, finishing the film, finishing Unhinged to deliver that virtually where, you know, I'm in Virginia here. So I would, um, I would wake up early and start working with my composer who was in Spain because he was, you know, whatever, seven hours ahead, eight hours ahead. And then um, my editorial and sound team were in LA and uh, visual effects in Vancouver. And then, you know, the actors, Russell and Karen, for instance, were in Australia. So I finished the film virtually. Wow. And uh, other than that, you know, I spent a lot of time, um, you know, catching up with my wife and kids who I hadn't spent a lot of time with in the last year. And, um, you know, cooking a lot of pizzas. I've been making pizza, you know, so uh, and doing a little writing. I'm doing, doing some writing in my, you know, in my uh, downtime. I love, I can only, so that sparks another question for me, putting out a film this way during this time, it's, it's so different from how you've done your previous films. Um, do you see a world where this is, becomes kind of the norm and how we put through, like you're kind of like setting the way for like how other people go forward with the movie industry? I mean, look, I think that, that, that there while trying to finish a film virtually was doable, you know, there's definitely, um, you know, nothing like being in the same room with people when you're trying to, you know, uh, to, 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 you know, do finishing touches on things, you know, but, um, 
we definitely, you know, uh, were experimenting, you know, trying to see what would work. And, and I'm sure some of it will stick moving forward and some of it won't. Um, you know, I think that uh, it was great to be able to be home while I was finishing a film. And yet, you know, I, I think that, you know, even the bandwidth required to stream, uh, you know, a finished film um, in full, full, uh, you know, full res with, with Atmos audio and everything, you know, you're still having delays and hiccups and, you know, it's just, you know, there were definitely some obstacles to, to doing the whole thing virtually, but, but I'm sure it'll continue to get better. And, you know, it does feel cool to be kind of, uh, you know, I guess, you know, taking some of the early or making some of the early attempts at trying to do some of this stuff. No, completely. Um, there's a lot of difficult things that go into making a film. There's a lot of difficult days that are on happen on set. Talk about your most, uh, I want to say problematic. You're the day that was most challenging for you on set and what sequence took most work for you. I mean, I think that, um, you know, shooting a film in New Orleans during hurricane season, um, you know, when you avoid hurricanes, which we, you know, we had a hurricane that we had to deal with, but that just, we, you just shut down production when there's a hurricane. Yeah. So it's not difficult. But when there's no hurricane, you also have this sort of combination of other environmental things like um, lightning delays. Like if lightning strikes within a radius of the, I think six or eight miles of the, of the production, you have to shut down for half an hour. And if another lightning strike happens within that half hour, the clock starts all over again. So, so trying to shoot what's booked as a 12 hour day when you've got three hours of lightning delays is really difficult. Um, and then combining that with, you know, 110 degree temperatures with, you know, heat index even higher than that, where you can't consume enough fluid to stay hydrated and have to get an IV at, you know, middle of the day just to stay hydrated, uh, you know, that adds to it. And then you've got old cars without air conditioning, you know, and, 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 you know, I mean, it's a lot of that car stuff was really challenging de dealing with the elements, dealing with the cars, dealing with, um, you know, uh, the sort of um, things that maybe people don't think about as much when they think about making a film, but, you know, we had a great crew and a great cast and, you know, uh, thankfully we were able to deal with all those. So even our most difficult day, you know, we, we were able to, to do what we set out to do that day. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. I can't wait for everyone else to see Unhinged so we can go more into that opening sequence and then we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll have a follow up about it later. Awesome. Anytime. I really appreciate it. You too. It's good talking to you. All right. Good talking with you. Take care. All right. You too. Bye bye.